Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's afternoon session, Ethical Hacking, Eternal Blues MS-17-010 Server Exploit Demonstration. Please give a warm welcome to New England Institute of Technology Assistant Professor Jesse Roberts. All right, uh, yeah, thank you. That's, whoa, that's a little loud, huh? Tough, all right. So, uh, yes, just as that description, I'm also uh, the Director of Cyber Response and Development for Compass IT Compliance, and we specialize in ethical hacking, IT auditing, and all sorts of different security services. We have a booth, you can come look us up uh, when I'm done with my presentation, because I know you guys will all be super interested in me after seeing my awesomeness in action. And I'm saying this awesomeness because I'm, I'm really guessing that it's gonna fail miserably because I've given this presentation roughly four times now and it's worked two out of the four. So you guys are the fifth, all right? So, you know, just bear with me. So hopefully everything works out all right. So um, I'm gonna start off and we're gonna do a little bit of, I know I said I will hack a server, you know, knock on wood, hacking is not, you know, a perfect thing. That's why they call it hacking, you're hacking it up, right? And I myself am a hack, so um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this does go out well. So I'm going to really talk about a bunch of different things, just not eternal blue. I'm going to talk about overall security posture in general, just kind of things like, hey, people are like, how do we get hacked? Why did we get hacked? And, and I'm going to go over why somebody might get hacked, OK? So like I just said, that's about me, Director of Cyber Response Development, Compass IT Compliance. I'm a hacker and a pen tester. It's a real fun part of my job. I'm also an assistant professor at the New England Institute of Technology, where I do cyber security related classes and courses and research. So I wanna start off with first, who doesn't know what ransomware is? Everybody knows, it. oh, two people, all right. All right, my, my colleague in the back, definitely, yeah, he's a little bit of a dope. Just kidding, I love you. Um, just in case, just a really quick overview, it holds your data hostage, right? You wake up or you go into your computer and you're like, oh, what's going on? These files look different. Next thing you know, you can't really open them or access them. And then you get somebody saying, hey, you got to send me this money to unlock your files, right? They're holding you hostage, okay? That's essentially what it is. They come in through a bunch of different ways. Uh, we have email delivery, right? That's usually the primary one. A malicious link on a website, right, could lead to it. And also, even a vulnerability in a computer, like I'm going to demonstrate today and why if I hack into something, I might want to just drop ransomware instead of stealing data. We'll discuss that in a little more in depth, okay? So the CNN news headline, um, Florida got hit pretty hard. What was it, uh, about six months ago? There are so many different counties. Has anybody been a victim of ransomware? It's okay. You, that's so BS. Somebody in this room <laughs> has got it. Nobody wants to own up to it. Come on, somebody. Just lie to me. There you go. Yes, my man. Everybody point and laugh at him now. No, just kidding, don't do that, all right? No, no, but no, it's a real thing, right? I mean, at, at one point, your systems, if you're not sure up on them, you might get hit with this ransomware because you know these attacks are on the rise and it's mainly because they're very easy, right? Uh, very low risk for the hacker, right? And basically, it's, it's an easy payday, okay? Um, this, this CNN news headline came out about two weeks ago. It's not fake news despite what, you know, this is not fake news. Uh, so basically, attacks on the public, state, local governments, and healthcare providers have been reported over 140. 85 attacks tracked last year. And these are just the tracked ones. Some, you know, people don't like to report it because everybody's ashamed, right? But um, it's, that's a 65% increase since last year. I personally saw this first type of attack in 2012. I was looking for, working for a managed service provider. And I basically saw this and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Like, I'm like, who thought of this geniusness? Did, and it's just like, it was brilliant, right? And then it was also great from a managed service provider and a security guy um, like uh, perspective because I was like, I can't do anything for you. I, I'm closing this ticket out. Like I can't, oh, do you have a backup? So my first question to them was, do you have a backup? Nope, sweet, <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, can't help you out, okay? I was like, I'm going to get another cup of coffee. That's going to be great. So moving into um, Eternal Blue, OK? So this is kind of the headline of this presentation. Eternal Blue is a software vulnerability in Microsoft Windows operating system. MS, it's designated MS17010 by Microsoft, OK? Meaning they are aware of this issue. 
They've told us it's an issue, and they've patched this issue, okay? Um, how does it work? Well, basically, it does a little thing called like a buffer overflow into the server message block 1.0. 1.0 is the first edition of the server message block. What is the server message block? I have it on that third bullet point right there. Everybody see it? Well, that's how you print, you know, when you click that little print button. That's how you like, oh, get on your file server and you look at your different files. It's all shared through the server message block. Okay, does everybody get that? Are we tracking? All right, awesome. I honestly have no idea if I'm gonna be able to push this an hour, but we'll see. All right, everybody stick with. You know what you guys could do if I'm way under an hour? Just ask me questions, random questions. Ask me about a cat, whatever, I'll try to answer it, all right? <laughs> so, Eternal Blue continued. All versions of Windows are vulnerable, pretty much. It was identified that all versions of Windows were vulnerable because they had the server message block turned on because of backwards compatibility, right? Making sure that systems were available. Um, many computers, as of right now, are still in patch. You guys won't believe me, but I'll show you in a little bit that they indeed are. Um, the security update was published March 14th, 2017, over two years ago. That's a meme, anybody know what a meme is? I'm not good at memeing. The younger kids are much better than me at that. I don't know, I found that. Hmm. So is this still an issue? Well, let's talk about it again. Uh, two years ago, a long time ago, right? Uh, something called WannaCry was in the news, right? And WannaCry was packaged in a way that it basically used this vulnerability in SMB and started attacking servers. It wormed its way around, locked up. Luckily, a security researcher uh, was able to reverse it and unlock all the, those files, which was really nice of them. And then we arrested them. So that was, that's nice, right? That we end, um, but yeah, it's great. We ended up arresting him. Hey, good job, buddy. Now we're arresting you for something else. But that's OK. Um, he, he got off. Not a big deal. So again, leading back into. Two years ago, this is a long time, is it still an issue? Well, let's take, I'm gonna show you guys something called Shodan. Anybody have any experience with Shodan? That's good, usually nobody in the room raises their hand. I had about six, so that's okay. No, that, that's great. So let's, let's go over Shodan, all right? Now Shodan, whoops, that's not Shodan. Shodan is the, uh, a vulnerable, well, it's, an in, it's a search engine, right? And it basically scours the internet for public IPs. You can find open web cameras, right? You could find wind turbines you can open and control, uh, programmable logic controllers. It's insane that this amount of information out here. Actually, even if you start Googling, people will be like, is Shodan legal? Yeah, it's legal. Does everybody know why it's legal? What's that? It doesn't explicitly use that information. Yeah, it doesn't, true. And, and, and uh, also case law has been cited that scanning, right, in the United States isn't illegal, believe it or not. So I could scan you all I want, right? As long as I don't cause any damage or use that information, uh, you know, in a bad way. Um, so let's take a look at this, these results here. I'm gonna try to run it in my hotspot. I probably should have planned out better for like, my whole presentation relies on the internet. So I, I probably should have like, you know, hey, maybe have uh, made sure I had a great internet connection, but it's not bad. All right, so what I just did was, uh, I just did a search of port 445 that's advertising SMB version one, okay? And for the operating system Windows. So now remember, I said that SMB version one is more than likely vulnerable to Eternal Blue. This is Tampa alone, okay? I've got this um, scoped out as far as just to be Tampa. How many, how many results are there? Can anybody see it? 737 potential targets, right? And everybody's like, well, how do we get hacked? Well, I mean, stuff like that, right? <laughs> stuff like that right there. It's like, come on. Like, I, I'm not a smart guy, and I figured out, like, hey, I could put, potentially hack 737 different targets, right? So another thing I kind of like to highlight. Ooh, can't breathe heavy. Note to self. Okay, here we go. Another thing I kind of like to highlight. This is another Shodan search, and it's going over port 3389. Does anybody know what port 3389? My students out there should. Remote yeah, remote desktop. We love that, right? Remote desktop. So there was another vulnerability recently identified. Does anybody know the name of that one? Yeah, it, so Eternal Blue is the other one. The new one is called Deep Blue, right? And I'm not going to do that one because I haven't practiced with it enough. But 
deep blue, right, what it does is, is it basically, uh, when you have an RDP session that just got disconnected, we throw that exploit at it, and boom, you're reconnected to that session. So that's also pretty scary. How many total results for Tampa do I have for uh, RDP? I got 1,653 results open up to the internet, meaning I can, I'm gonna try it right now, actually. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna actually log in, but we'll just see if this is accurate information. Mike's, uh, I'm doing it. Is that anybody's server in the room? One, one, time I, uh, one time I did this presentation, I was showing off Shodan, I was like, oh yeah, check this out. And they're like, hey, that's our server. And I was like, oh, you might, you might, wanna, go, you might wanna go fix that up. Now, again, I'm not saying 3389's bad. Sometimes, you know, if you put in a strong enough password, strong, you know, you should be okay, but why? Get a VPN, spend that extra couple dollars. Here we go, let's see if it's open. Oh, look at that. So I could, you know, essentially these are now, these for me, as an unethical hacker, I would start running brute force attempts all day, right? And if, actually, even if you have it at home, you're gonna notice, go check your security log on your home computer. If you have 3389 open, I guarantee you're getting hits because that's, people do this. It's easy, they just sit there, they let it run, and they have it report back when it's, yeah, hey, they got something open, okay? And I always kind of like to just scroll down here and look at all the nice little pictures. <laughs> of course, if the internet, eh. Oh, there we go. Dan is Daniel in the audience? <laughs> Daniel Slontnicker? No? Uh, we got Arnett, Rack Alley, Vishal, right? That's in Tampa. Uh, I don't know why that one is. That's already got hacked. That's got some China. That Guarantee that bad boy is vulnerable, okay? So, uh, really, really kind of good stuff here. So, again, Mega, anybody here from that company? No? No? All right. And I, the, now you see somebody running out the door. <laughs> get, out, get out of here. All right. Um, so, again, my point being with a lot of this is, you know, oftentimes we're like, oh, how do we get hacked? How do we get hacked? Well, again, 3389, again, in itself is not a vulnerability, but there have been vulnerabilities in it. And why even have it open, right? Why have SMB version 1? open when, if your system still need SMB version one, you're in, you're in a whole other lot of mess anyway. But why? Like, you, and I'll tell you why, it's because people are um, under-trained, right? And they're overworked. Usually in the reverse order, usually they're just overworked, right? Because we're not putting enough emphasis in proper IT, right? And that's why we have all these different cybersecurity issues. It's not, if you're doing everything correctly, and you know, you're basically making sure you got those patches installed, you're having good inventories of your system, it's very unlikely that you're gonna get hacked, right? Because people like me, who are semi-smart, I'm not gonna be able to use tools that the super smart people built to hack into if you're doing things correctly. Make sense? All right, good, good, good. All right, so, let's see where we're at here. Yeah, I kind of went a little out of order, but that's okay. You guys will forgive me. So again, uh, worldwide, um, those results are a little bit old. That's 1-4-2019. I'm sure SMB1 potential eternal blue targets, we have almost a million up there. If you see return 976,785 results, okay? That means worldwide, those are all potential to eternal blue, okay? Again, that's a lot of servers. I didn't even know that was that many servers like out there. Just it's weird. It's crazy to think of. Um, again, that's just me just narrowing down the list. We had about 734 locally potential targets as of 10 2019. And again, this is just mind-numbingly crazy. You're just kind of like, why, 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 why? We did this. We went over this, and let's kind of take a look at it. So again, I'm not saying that all those hosts are indeed vulnerable. But I guarantee you, I, if I keep going down the list, I'm going to hit one, right? And again, somebody in this room, right after I'm done doing this talk, could pop on Shodan, do those same queries I did, figure out how to use the Eternal Blue exploit, which I will show you how to use, and then try to break into one of those servers. Don't do that. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm not advocating that you do this, OK? Because then you'll go to jail, all right? But there's a very high 
possibility that somebody will do that. And maybe that server is junk, right? Maybe it doesn't really have anything on it. But is it connected to other servers that might have stuff on it, right? So think about that as well. All right, so let's kind of get into the live demo. And I'm going to go as slow as I possibly can because I'm supposed to fill an hour. And I don't, this, on, you guys are going to be blown away at how, has it, how quick this is. It'll be like, boom. <laughs> I could get in there in like, you know, under five minutes. Hopefully, knock on wood if everything works out good. So uh, in order to do this, I'm using a contained environment. It's, uh, it's a cloud environment. Again, I wish I had a little more foresight in making sure internet was perfect. So hopefully it's not too, too slow. But I'm going to uh, try to break into this machine using Kali Linux. Who knows, everybody should know Kali Linux if you're here today, right? Everybody knows, it's fun. It's, the, it's uh, offensive security, right? Um, put out this distribution. Anybody know its predecessor's name? Backtrack. Backtrack. Oh, you guys are on the ball, let me tell you. Good. Glad, I'm glad I got a room full of nerds. This is great. <laughs> so, so yeah, and they're constantly making rolling updates to it. And the nice thing about Kali Linux is, is that it has all these different applications just built in. All these different, I mean, they even have it laid out in a, hey, what do you want to do? For those of you that are not familiar with it. So information gathering, right? Vulnerability analysis. OpenVAS, everybody know what OpenVAS is? Yeah, it's a vulnerability, yep, yep. So, Web application analysis stuff, like I could do things like with Burp Suite. Burp Suite is a web application hacking platform. All different things we could do. Uh, wireless attacks, anybody ever get into uh, air crack, right? Everybody familiar with that? You crack that Wi-Fi password, grab that handshake, boom, you're open, right? So again, great platform for uh, testing things out. So I'm going to try to go through, again, we did uh, some initial recon on those servers. Now let's pretend like I was going to actually attack one of those servers we found. So one of the first things I'm going to want to do is I'm going to run, want to run a port scan against that server. Hopefully it's responding. Let me just try to ping it. And this will be the end of the presentation if it doesn't respond. So <laughs> now I'm just going to run out and be like, I'm done. All right, it's, it's pinging me, so that's good at least. All right, so I'm going to clear my screen. And does anybody know what this, this little bad boy is going to do for me? Nmap, right? Man, this is great. Like, usually I'm presenting to people and they're like, what? What are you talking about? This is good. I'm sure that some of you, like my friend Jeff, he's definitely like, what are you talking about, Jesse? But um, let's go ahead. So I'm going to do an Nmap 10.0.0.2 against that IP. And the basics, the basic, if you know your Nmap switches, this is going to do a real basic scan. I could do a lot more. I could throw scripts at it, right, by putting the dash A parameter. If I did this uh, dash PN, it's going to skip the ping connect scan, right? I could do a SYN scan, uh, TCP connect scan, use a three-way handshake. And the idea behind that is, is it's just trying to elicit more information from the server, OK? So let's kick it off and see what we get. Now, normally it takes like four seconds, but I don't know. It's probably going to, oh, there we go. Actually, that was really quick. What, what, 5.78 seconds, OK. So, so I got a scan. Again, this is all local area network. So if it was a cloud server that I'm pointing at, it might take you know, 15 seconds. But either way, let's kind of analyze these different ports we have open right now. We have 135, 139, uh, which they kind of tell you right there. I could do a little more en enumeration to get some information. But we saw that those are actually um, NetBIOS ports. OK, 445. This is the one we've been talking about. Eternal Blue attacks 445, which is SMB, uh, specifically SMB version 1. And then I have my 3389 uh, port there, which is our good friend RDP. So OK, this guy looks like he's ready. He looks like he's ready to get hacked. Let's, uh, let's take it a step further here. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to open up the Metasploit framework. Now, is everybody familiar with the Metasploit framework? Yeah, it's, it's a super cool tool. And then usually when I do this, people are like, how is that legal? Like, why do they make tools like that? But we make tools like this to educate ourselves, right? We, we do this because knowing makes us more prepared. So I'm just firing up my database, um, firing up my Metasploit instance and uh, starting up the Metasploit framework. And once I get in there, I'm going to actually plug in that vulnerability designation. And then it's going to be nice enough and go, hey, yeah, with that vulnerability designation, you can basically use all these different exploits. So let's start off. Zoom in, enhance. I always like to do that. Super troopers, I mean, enhance. All right, here we go. 
There's a cow. It goes moo. All right, I see. Search. Yes. So instantly I have a bunch of different modules I can use. And again, these modules are going to allow me to break into the server. I'm going to close out my, minimize my nmap scan here. So, the, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, so let's kind of take a look at my different options here. And I'm just going to drag this over. Is anybody bored? Everybody good? I don't hear anybody yawning, so that's good. Ba, 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 ba. Sorry. All right. So just trying to stretch this out. It's on my surface. You guys probably see it better than I do. All right. So we have a couple different things. Uh, Eternal Champion. Uh, we have the Auxiliary Scanner SMB uh, RC Detection. We have the uh, SMB Remote uh, Windows Kernel Pool Corruption, which is probably the one I'm going to use. And then we have the variant for Windows 8. Um, I already know that the, the one I'm going to use is above here only because it's, uh, I know it's not a Windows 8 architecture. It's Server 2018. I'm sorry, Server, 2000, right? Server 2008, which is going end of life when, people? Yeah, j j yeah, January, January, February. So I think it's like right at the end of January. It's going end of life meeting Microsoft saying we're not going to support this anymore. But I can guarantee you there's organizations at this conference that have a whole bunch of Server 2008 still. Right? Everybody, who, yeah, people are shaking their heads like, yeah, we got that. We got some 2003. Well, somebody was like, somebody's like, that, that, uh, yeah, we saw one. We saw a 2003, and it got hacked by the Chinese already. So, I mean, come on. All right, so let's go ahead. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a scanner just to see if my target's vulnerable. Now, the interesting thing about this module, and I can't take credit for this, this tool is awesome because it makes people like me look super smart when in reality I just figured out how to copy and paste stuff, right? So here we go. I wish I was smart enough to write this thing. All right. So I'm sorry, I just did a search again. I'm going to use this auxiliary scanner. Right now, I'm bumped into that module. And now to set it against some host, I have to look at the options I have with it. All right, so one of the fields that's required is our hosts, meaning, hey, what remote host do you want to run against? I could pull all those IPs off of Shodan, right, and then just run it against all those IPs. It'll take it a little bit, and then it's going to report back to me, hey, this is most likely vulnerable to Eternal Blue, right? But I'm just going to do it against my particular one. All right, so I'm setting my remote host, my target. I'm just going to kick it off. Host is likely vulnerable, right? And it even tells me what I did, what I, what I already knew, Windows Server 2008 R2, Service Pack 1, X64. So pretty cool right there, right? So one more time, I'm going to go ahead and do a search on, oops, that just to pull up the next module I want to use. And I'm going to go ahead and use this exploit now. Now, again, remember, nmap scan, auxiliary scan module to detect that if it's actually vulnerable to Eternal Blue. And I could have loaded 50, 100 servers, or 10. There might actually be a limit, but the point is I could just sit there, let it go, go grab some lunch, go get a beer, come back and check it on it, right? Here we go. So now, within Metasploit, I'm going to use So I'm stepped into that module now. Once again, I have to set my R hosts. Everybody doing good? Yeah? All right, great. Everybody having a good time? All right. And another note, I'm having a great time. This is great. Like, usually I get people like, oh, I don't know. And they say, you guys are all very engaged. So it's like, except that guy. He's full in his arms. He's sleeping. Look at him. <laughs> I called you out, buddy. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Set our hosts. Here we go. And now I'm going to kick this off. And hopefully the, we're going to see it go through. Is you're going to say, hey, launching stager, and it's going to go boom, 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 boom. I'm hoping I see something that says win, right? If I see anything else other than win, like if it says fail, I'm going to feel pretty bad. Okay, so 
Everybody, you know, cross your fingers for me. So it's sending it. Come on, give me that sweet win win box. Okay, naturally it's not doing it. Oh, there we go. Yes, we're good. Now all I gotta do is hit enter, and I get a Windows system command prompt. Thunderous applause, people, please. Thank you. Thank you. No, all right. That's, but we're not done yet, right? So that's cool. I could transfer things. I like to do this for the demonstration, though. I like to go, hey, all right, check this out now. Yeah, F this there. I could do that. <laughs> Net user. Somebody please remember that password because I'm not going to remember it. Hash, that used to be called a pound sign. And like, <laughs> I bet I'm teaching now. No, it's funny. I start calling it hashtag. It's so weird. I'd be like, oh, pound and, or number sign. Now, now, now it's hash. Isn't that crazy? Damn Twitter. It's changed our culture. <laughs> All right, so what did I, anybody have any idea what I just did? It should be, right. I, add, I added myself a user and a password. Now, it's a limited user, but using the net command. Since I'm in this box with that eternal blue ex exploit that has system level privileges, I all, my command line has system level privileges. So net local group administrators jesse add. Here we go. Whew. OK, that looked like it was going to freeze up there for a minute. All right, so I just created myself a user in this box. And then I just add myself as administrator. So yeah, normally a hacker's not going to do, like I'm not going to be like, hey, let me add my username, Jesse, in there, right? Like that probably wouldn't be too smart. But for our demonstration purposes, you know, it's, it's cool. So now I don't have to, I just created myself an entryway in there because what, what other port was open? 33A9. So that means since I'm in the administrators group now, I can easily just RDP into the server. Well, easily, we'll see. Hold on. Let's find out. So I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to launch this Ramina desktop client, remote desktop client. And this is pretty much an awesome remote desktop client for uh, Linux, if you're not familiar with it. You could do all sorts of different connections. And hopefully I'm going to go in 10.0.0.2. And I'll accept that. And Jesse. Look at that, boom, now I'm already peed in. All right, now that, you gotta put yourself in the hacker mindset now. I had this very same scenario happen to a customer, okay? He had port 3389 open, right? And then basically what ended up happening was he got hacked and it was, it, he got hacked, he didn't really know how it happened, but then it did review, I did review it and they did come in through 3389. I have no idea, like they must have just guessed his username and password, but he had 3389 open. And next thing you know, they start just pulling his data, right? They were pulling it, right? Now, since I'm in this box right now, I'm going to look around for some super important files. And clearly, <laughs> clearly I have some super important files here. Uh, but as, an, as a hacker or a cyber criminal, I could be like, oh, yeah, sweet. I get these super important files. Let me uh, kind of look through them. And the kids, the kids in the audience should appreciate some of these. Hold on. That's actually somebody I know. Her name's uh, Danielle. She works uh, in the Ryan State Police. What's that, kids? Apex Legends. All right. Yeah, that's a game the youngins play. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and look. Uh, that's Congressman Jim Langevin. He's from our state. Clearly, super important stuff. Oh, some Thanos. Thanos, right? Thanos. I don't know. How do you say it? <laughs> Thanos. I don't know. Yeah. Thanos. Thanos. Pickle Rick. Everybody know Rick and Morty, new season? I know some, I know my nerds in here know Pickle Rick, all right? All right, Pickle Rick. Let's keep looking. Aw, nice little puppies. And there's Danielle again. Okay, so, but clearly some super important files here. So I could take this data, right? I could take it, copy it, and then I'm like, ah, oh, sweet, I'm going to sell this data. You know how hard it is to sell data, right? Even if these were credit card numbers, what do I have to do with that, those credit card numbers at this point? What would I have to do? Start selling the dark web, find a buyer. Yeah, I probably would go to the dark web. Has anybody ever tried navigating the Tor network? It, it's terrible, right? 
Not to mention it's slow and terrible, and the content looks like it's from 1990, right? But then you see stuff you just can't unsee on there, right? Like you, it's just, you're just like, Ugh, why is this on here? And that's why they call it the dark web. So then I have to take that data, right? I got to take that data in hopes that I will find a buyer, and then hopefully that buyer doesn't rip me off, right? Or somehow he t figures out how to stop the Bitcoin transaction, and then I'm like, oh crap, now I'm just out of money. Spent all that time hacking, and I'm screwed, right? So what we're seeing now is instead of people, so they, they are copying your data, right? They're taking it anyway, because why not? They're already in there. But instead of making it like so that it's not there and deleting it for you, we're also, little did you, everybody in this room know, as I was making this connection, I was making a reverse connection back onto my attacker machine, right? So now I have a reverse connection back, and I have this thing, it's called ransomware, so I'm guessing you guys probably know what I'm gonna do with this. So I'm gonna paste that in there. I'm gonna close this out. And again, if you haven't seen ransomware in action, get ready. Um, so again, I'm gonna now, so the hacker, he's going to basically go, hey, I believe I'm just gonna encrypt this and then force you to pay me to unlock it, right? That's what they do. And at the same time, I'm gonna try to sell your data, right? Because they're double dipping at this point. It's brilliant, it's great. All right, let's go ahead and launch this ransomware. There we go. <laughs> so within a second or two, we're gonna see these file names change, and that's what ransomware does. Like it, it encrypts it, and then, oh, it threw up an oh no, right? So now your end user, you know, they come in, they start panicking, or this happens to you, you start panicking, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm computer savvy, I don't know how to fix this, my extension got changed, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rename that to a .jpg, right? Sure, and that'll fix, right? And then you're like, oh, wait a minute, what's going on? Then you start looking, you're like, hey, that's, that's not cool, right? And then you start looking through your file server share, and you're like, oh, oh my goodness, what's, what's going on here? It's starting to hit everywhere, right? And you're, you're freaking out, and then you're like sitting there like, Hmm, should I tell my boss this is happening? Should I contact the <laughs> IT people? Like, oh, maybe I'll just pull the plug, I don't know, right? Well, usually that's a, a pretty good reaction, but you're sitting there and you're, start, you're really starting to panic now. You're like, okay, well maybe if I do that and I copy it and I move it somewhere else and I uh, let go, oh, but then all of a sudden this guy comes up. <laughs> and this is the message essentially telling you, hey, you're screwed, right? So. Basically what's coming up now, and you're sitting there, you're like, you didn't really know what's going on, but now you pretty much know because you got this guy's ugly mug looking at you, all right? And why didn't I shave before taking that? <laughs> My glasses look a little crooked. Ugh. Ugh. Nobody take a picture of that. Wait, is this being videoed? <laughs> oh, man. All right, anyway. So, oh no, your personal files will be deleted, your photos, videos, documents, etc. but don't worry, all hope is not lost. Every hour I select some files to permanently delete. So that is particularly malicious, right? Like, so now, if you're not paying me, I'm gonna delete your stuff permanently anyway, right? And that is just like a really, really nasty thing to do. Um, and the, so then again, your other knee-jerk reaction is to, oh God, I'm gonna pull the plug, he can't do anything if I turn it off. But with this particular variant of ransomware, when you turn it off and turn it back on, it goes, hey, you probably shouldn't have done that, all right? Because now I did, I just went and deleted a bunch of your files. So either way, you're screwed. Um, does anybody know the variant I'm talking about here? This is just, this ended up being something called the Jigsaw ransomware, okay? And it was, it was actually pretty awesome, but it, they wrote it in a way that was easily uh, reverse engineered, so we were able to figure it out. But still pretty, pretty, uh, pretty brutal stuff. Um, so my next thing is here, when you're thinking of uh, an organization, right, it's basically telling me, hey, how do I send $3,000 worth of Bitcoin? Or even that, I think everybody knows what Bitcoins are, right? For the most part, who, honestly, who doesn't know? It, there you go, good, so yeah, our, our younger kid, kids here don't know uh, what Bitcoin is, but that's good, so Bitcoin, it's a digital currency, right? I don't understand myself, like why it's valuable, like a lot of people don't, well, why is the American dollar valuable? I don't know, it's a trust thing, I guess. But um, who would know how to, how would, would anybody in this room be able to get a Bitcoin in their hand or on their device instantly today if you had to pay this ransom. It's not, it'd be very hard to do unless you already had it 
coined up because they have these exchanges out there where they buy the Bitcoins, right? So not where you can buy Bitcoins, but it takes like weeks of approval process, right? And then, you know, what happens if all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, Bitcoin's worth $10,000 again, right? And the ransom's going up. So my point being is that when you're in this type of scenario, part of your, I, I, I like to talk about instant response plan. You should decide, hey, am I going to pay for this or am I not going to pay for this? And if you, and that decision needs to be made before you even get hacked, right? Because what if you need Bitcoins and you don't have any on hand? Then your files are getting deleted in 58, 57 minutes, right? Pretty crazy stuff. So let's, was that cool? Was everybody, that was, that was awesome, right? Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, that's all I wanted. I just a little clap, thank you. All right, so just to kind of review a little bit here. How do we protect against this type of stuff? Well, first of all, know your inventory, right? You start looking at things, like start thinking like, hey, if you're running an organization, if, you, if you're in charge of servers, you gotta know what's out there, right? How do you protect it if you don't know what's out there, right? You go back and you do, a, you do an audit, right? Have somebody else come in and do an audit, get, do one yourself, but it's usually not good to audit yourself, right? Because whenever I'm, like uh, Jeff will be like, oh, Jesse, how's, how's that thing doing? How, how are you doing on that project? I'm like, oh, I'm doing great, it's awesome. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh, I'm not doing too good. I'm always gonna, like you always think you're doing the best thing, right? But so that's why it's good to have a third party to come in and look. Uh, get pen tested, right? So see if somebody could actually do anything with those discovered vulnerabilities, right? Make sure they're not a high level risk of vulnerabilities. Uh, another thing that uh, often ends up happening was is review permissions on file shares, right? So oftentimes our IT administrators, people need all these different types of access to different files, right? And what ends up happening is like, oh yeah, sure, everyone full control, don't worry about it. Oh yeah, they get read, oh they get admin rights, they do this. And next thing you know, you're just sitting there and somebody ends up executing a piece of ransomware and they hit the full server, right? Instead of, you could have really segmented it out, right? With the principle of least privilege, and maybe they only got their files infected, right? Still bad, but it's not attacking everything. Um, the other thing, verify and test your disaster recovery plan, your business continuity plan. Who's, let's be honest, IT runs all the businesses. It absolutely does, right? Even if you're, a, you know, you're a painter, right? If you're a painter, you're still sending your invoices out for the most part through like a, some type of program or Excel spreadsheet. You keep a track of different things. So to say that IT is not important for a certain business is just a lie, right? And if you're in charge of IT, like if you're the head of a company and your IT budget, you're not really paying much attention to it. You're like, oh, I want to get it done cheap. You're in risk of getting hacked. And then finally, uh, review your incident response plan. Make sure you have an incident response plan, okay? What do you do in a scenario like this? Like, in a scenario like this, if I had pulled the plug on that machine and that ransomware was gonna do what it said, delete your files, I just lost a bunch of data, right? Make sense? And then knowing when to pay or when not to pay. So uh, the Department of Homeland Security and Law Enforcement, they don't recommend paying. Why? Encur it encourages them, right? You're like, oh, sweet. The other thing, Say, I'm like, hey, send me these uh, Bitcoins. Um, uh, send me Bitcoins. What's the guarantee I actually unlock it? I'm like, yeah, you send me that much. Why don't you send me a little bit more now? A little bit more now, and then I cut communications. You have no recourse, right? You can't, you can't go, hey, policeman, they did this. Well, who was it? I don't know. It was the hacker, right? Nobody really knows. Um, the other thing to really think about is when you are paying these hackers, right, they could be state-sponsored terrorists, right? We, we saw that recently, uh, and I'm not, like, a, not to get a political discussion, but North Korea made a lot of money off of ransomware attacks, we found out, okay? And um, again, so just have it in your mind if you're going to pay or not. Um, have those funds ready, and that's, that's about it. Oh, man, I went way under, but we, we'll have a few questions, right? We'll have some time for questions, right? That, and that's it. Is that, is that was that, uh, anybody have any questions around Jesse Roberts? Shoot. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, that's great, thank you. I hope everyone, so the question was, what kind of courses do you recommend to learn this stuff? Well, uh, you know, honestly, getting on, playing with it, uh, you're gonna wanna maybe look into, there's tons of YouTube videos. There's YouTube, I have a YouTube video of me doing this on our company's website, you know? Um, so I would say, look into getting your certified ethical hacker, right? You're young, you know, you get some time, that's a pretty easy test to start off with. Uh, start just, and honestly, it's like pick up a book. I know a lot of people go, ooh, books are dead. Like 
find a book, like an intro to cybersecurity or something, just start reading about it, right? Because then you get a, a nice broad uh, understanding of IT. And once you have that, you're actually going to be a really good hacker. If you know how IT is supposed to work, you, you're going to be you're going to be a good hacker because you know what people do wrong, right? Any any other questions? We have one. Yes. Sure. Yeah. True. Yeah. Those. I, yeah. I told you, Coursera, Udemy. All those different different types of services, they're they're pretty good. Like they're not always a hundred percent, but it, it, they definitely help. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's twenty five municipalities. Yeah. Yeah. The issues that you have is that Yeah. Absolutely. That that brings up a great point. You gotta make sure you're sharing your response plans. You gotta we and you know, as embarrassing as it is that you get hacked, share the fact that you got hacked, right? So others can learn from your mistakes, right? That's how we learn. We make mistakes and we learn from unless, you know, we're stupid, right? But I mean like like, um, if I bash my head against this table, it's going to hurt, right? And then I'll be like, hey, I'm not going to do that again, right? That makes sense. But absolutely, sharing some response plans. There are tons of good th resources online where you would want to establish in some response plan, do a playbook, put it out there, get on the forums. Um, there are platforms. I don't think there's any one good centralized one where people share this stuff. But doing the research, the internet search on this stuff can definitely help. Any, any other questions? Yes. Uh, initially, my initial thoughts are, yeah, it's it's pretty easy. You just have to have that condition where they did close out of it. And I was going to try to set one up, but that would pro I just didn't want to risk it, right? Because I haven't perfected that method yet. Yes? Do you think people need to know why you're seeking knowledge for OS? Uh, you know, they say, ah, what is this for? They can be wrong with something that is not. So they take a risk, they turn it around, and then tell you, hey, this is what it's always for. Yeah. Right. I would like to see Microsoft make it easier. This is the way you do it for anybody that you spread it out and cover. So believe it or not, yeah, Microsoft does does have something in place for that, but and uh, we don't actually implement it because it ends up being cumbersome. So it would be nice to have something, but then again, you're always going to have they have uh, the newest versions of AV where they're basically uh, almost artificial intelligence where they self learn good sample sets, but. You know, at any given time, like what if Chrome does an update, right? For example, and you have the version before Chrome whitelisted, and then all of a sudden now you can't run Chrome anymore, right? So yeah, I, I think that we, I have been seeing that, but again, it does, like you said, it ends up being more of a hassle than a benefit, and then people can't use the systems, right? It's all about maintaining that CIA triangle, you know, confidentiality and availability and integrity, right? Where you have to make sure that the system's available, but if you have too much security, then it's not gonna be available, right? Any other questions? All right, so thank you, everybody. If you, if you like my presentation, get on that app. Give me some good ratings. If you didn't like it, just stay sh silent about it. And I really appreciate I really appreciate everybody coming. I, we got a booth if you want to come by and talk to me. My email's on the app. If you want to grab a card, feel free to send me any questions. I only have, like, I don't know, maybe 20 cards. So the first 20 lucky people will uh, get my thank you again. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's not offensive at all. That's great. He's a very know. he's a very successful comedian. So, <laughs> thank you. Somebody told me I. Uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, no, that not offensive at all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.